Okay, uh, boys and girls, I started to do some of the scoring or checking of your scoring on the reading comprehension test. Uh, and what I, one of the things that I'm noticing is that we need uh, to have some extra help and some extra conversations about how to write an appropriate extended response question. Now, if you recall, before you took the test, I walked you through each of the pages of this test. And one of the things I told you when we got to this page right here, which is question number one of the extended response question, I read this to you. I said, they're going to ask you, once you finish reading these two passages, they're going to ask you this question. Using information from both texts, explain one way the myth and the article are similar and one way they are different. Be sure to support your answer with specific details from both texts. And you'll notice that in the question, specific details from both texts are underlined and bolded. And then in parentheses after that, it says your answer must be written in complete sentences, beginning with a capital letter and ending with punctuation. Use text-specific keywords in your answer. Words appearing in the text must, must be spelled correctly. Now, the reason I read the question to you before we took the test, and if you remember, I reminded you of this before you took the test, is that once you know what the extended response question is, as you are reading the text, you can jot down information in the white space. Information that you can go back to, to be specific. So before you even began the test, you knew what the extended response question was. You knew what they were going to be looking. And in addition to that, I told you that I had identified seven keywords in the text that needed to appear in your answer. And that from those seven, you needed to have five of them. You needed to have five of the seven. So you should have already been aware that there were really specific keywords that you needed to have in your answer in order for your answer to be correct. Nearly everyone so far has not been able to do that. And even the, the answers that were able to have the right number of keywords didn't quite make sense. So I wanted to take some time today to go through this with you step by step so that the next time we take a test, everyone will do better. Okay? Now, the other strategy that we've talked about, and I know it is very possible that a teacher in the past has told you to wait and answer the extended response questions last. But if you read that question before you take the test, which I did with you, and you know the information that they're looking for, and you read the text and mark it like you were instructed to, so when you look at your test, when I look at your test and I see that you did not write anything in the white space, I know that you did not follow my directions and my instructions. You also are not using the best test taking habits in order to be successful. And that's what we're all working towards is trying to be successful, trying to improve our work every time. So think about that. Did you follow those directions? All right, so let's go back now. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to read. I will display the text up here for you to see. Let me zoom in a little bit on it so that it's a little bit bigger. When we previewed the test, I told you that there were two passages here. Uh, that The first passage was a myth and that the title was Why the Evergreen Trees Never Lose Their Leaves, and that the second passage, which began on page three, was an article, that it was an informational piece. 
and the title of that one was Why Are Evergreen Trees Green All Year Round? So as I'm reading these texts out loud to you, I want you to be thinking in your head and jotting in your notebook in front of you information that you would need. Remember, what is our task? Our task is to find one way in which these two articles are similar and one way that these two, I shouldn't say articles, they're passages, because the first one is a myth and the second one is an article, but in what way are these two passages similar and in what way are these two passages different? But remember, the second part of that question is to include specific details from both texts. So listen while I read, and please jot in your notebook. Winter was coming, and the days grew colder. All of the other birds had flown south, seeking warmer weather. They would not return until spring. But there was one little bird who stayed behind. He had a broken wing and could not fly. Shivering from the cold, he searched for a place to keep warm. When he saw the trees of the great forest, he thought that he might ask them for help. Perhaps I can ask the trees if they would be willing to keep me warm through the winter. So, hopping and fluttering with his broken wing, the little bird went to the edge of the forest. The first tree he came to was a tall silver birch. Beautiful birch tree, will you let me live in your warm branches until spring? The birch tree replied, indeed not. What a terrible thing to ask. I have to take care of my delicate boughs through the winter. Go away. So, hopping and fluttering with his broken wing, the little bird went on until he came to the next tree. It was a great oak tree. Oh, big oak tree, will you let me live in your warm branches until spring? The oak tree replied, indeed not. What a terrible thing to ask. If you stay in my boughs all winter, you will eat all of my tender acorns go away. So hopping and fluttering with his broken wing, the little bird went on until he came to the next tree. It was a willow tree growing by the edge of a brook. Oh, beautiful willow tree, will you let me live in your warm branches until spring? The willow tree replied, indeed not. What a terrible thing to ask. I never allow strangers to stay in my boughs. Go away. The poor little bird did not know where to go, so he kept hopping and fluttering along with his broken wing. Presently, the spruce tree saw him, shivering on the forest floor. Little bird, where are you going? The spruce tree asked. I do not know, the little bird whimpered. My wing is broken, so I could not fly south with the others. Now it is winter. The air is frigid. The trees will not let me stay in their warm boughs. I will truly, I will, I'm sorry, excuse me. I will surely freeze to death. You may live on one of my branches, the spruce offered. May I stay all winter, the little bird pleaded. Yes, replied the spruce, I would be happy to have you. The pine trees standing nearby overheard their conversation. My branches are not very warm, but I am big and strong, he said. I can block the frigid wind. So the little bird fluttered up into the warm boughs of the spruce and the pine tree blocked the freezing wind. When the juniper tree saw what was going on, it said, you know, little bird, you need something to eat this winter. My berries are perfect for little birds. The little bird settled into the warmth of the, spruces, of the spruce tree's branches while the pine tree sheltered him from the wind and the juniper provided berries for him at, to eat. That night, the weather turned bitter cold and the north wind wanted to come to the great forest to play. 
He liked to puff his icy breath at all of the leaves and needles on the trees, causing them to fall to the ground. The north wind loved to see the trees bare. His father, the Frost King, had witnessed what had happened to the little bird. So before the north wind left home, he told him, My son, do not touch the leaves and needles of the trees that were kind to the bird with the broken wing. That is why, even today, spruce, pine, and juniper trees are green all winter long. Okay, so look down and see what you jotted in your notebook. Remember your task. You've already read these when you took the test. One way they were similar, one way they were different. Now we're going to go to the second passage and I'd like you to do the same thing. Remember, not only do you have to come up with a way that they're similar and a way that they're different, but you have to come up with specific details from the text. Passage two is why are evergreen trees green all year round? Evergreen trees, also known as conifers because, the cone, because of the cones that hold their seeds, include spruce, spruce, fir, and pine trees. Although they remain green year round, they do lose their leaves, but not all of the, at the same time, the way that deciduous trees do. The evergreen thrives in cold climates. Its leaves are adapted to make the most of its environment. The leaves are often small and narrow, like needles. They can remain on a tree for anywhere from 1 to 20 years, depending on the species of tree. However, most leaves remain on the tree for less than 5 years. By keeping its leaves year-round, evergreens can make food during periods of thaw during the winter. In addition, the plant does not waste energy regrowing a full set of leaves each year. The leaves of an evergreen have the same function as leaves of other trees. They make through food through photosynthesis. The leaves are often a dark green color because they are packed with the sun-absorbing compound chlorophyll. The many small leaves filled with chlorophyll gather as much energy as they can from the small amount Sorry, I've lost my, my spot. Somebody was playing with their shoe. The small, the many small leaves filled with chlorophyll gather as much energy as they can from the small amount of sunlight available during the winter. This energy is used to make glucose for food. The dark color also keeps the plant warm in its cold environment. Dark colors absorb sunlight. The cold climate keeps precipitation frozen and unavailable to the plant. The small surface area and thick coating of wax on the needle-like leaves allow the plant to retain water. Less surface area reduces water evaporation. The leaves also have small holes called stomata. These can be closed very tightly to stop water loss. Lastly, the small pointy leaves and the cone-like shape of the tree itself shed snow more easily than other trees. As a result, the branches of evergreens are less likely to break under the weight of snow and ice. Okay, so we've read or reread, I should say, the two passages that you were asked to find similarities and differences. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to turn and talk to a partner and I would like you to come up with one way these two passages are similar and one way these two passages are different.
Passages are different. Sophia. The first text talks about multiple trees, like multiple trees the birds go to. But the second text talks about one type of tree. Okay, so do you think that that difference, though, would be a very mature and fourth grade level answer? No. no. Okay, so what you're saying isn't necessarily incorrect. Okay, however, um, it's really not what we would expect a fourth grader to be noticing about something that they've read. Okay, a lower level reader might notice that, but a fourth grade reader is more sophisticated. Antonio? Um, that the first text is, talks about a myth about evergreen trees, but the second text talks about the information about them. Okay, so, and this one is informational. Okay, so let's just stop for a second. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you saw that. That was a difference, too. Okay, now if you hadn't noticed that it was explicitly in the text at the, at the top, it said, read this myth. And then it said, read this article. So you would have seen that. But would your response, should your response just stop there and say, one is a myth and one is informational? No, why? What did the question ask us? What did the question ask us to do, Carly? For um, more similarity and difference. What else did it ask us to do? Oh. It asked us um, to add inf uh, specific, specific uh, information to the text. Okay, so if you say that one of the ways that these two passages are different is that passage number one is a myth and passage number two is informational, okay? And you stopped there and did not elaborate on it. You didn't answer the second part of the question. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me show you what I'm talking about. What are some of the details that you should include about the myth? What are some of the details you just don't say, what is it a myth about? What is it a myth about, Hayden? <coughs> okay, so it's a bird with a broken wing who is trying to stay in a tree for winter because it cannot fly south with the other birds. Birds tend to migrate, and they migrate to get to warmer climates. So in the winter, they fly south, which is why we get a lot of birds down here in Florida, although I'm afraid that they've probably flown even more south since it's so frigidly cold right now. Okay, what other information? 
Besides the fact that it is about, the, if this is a story about, this is a myth or a story that is fictional about a bird with a broken wing. What else should we include? What other information? Blake? Well, at the end, it says that the King Frost told a little frog that she Okay, so what do you want me to include on our, our chart, our graph here? That it explains a different way um, of how they stay green all year. In the when you say it explains in a different way, what do you mean? Like it says, um, like the north wind can blow the, the um, fruit of the trees. And in the informational one, it's saying, it's like, whatever it is saying, Okay, let's just focus. Let's just focus here on passage number one. What are the things we need to include? Bird with a broken wing, and now you're saying that the, the myth is is trying to explain why evergreens keep their leaves. Okay, so it's a fictional, right? It's a fictional explanation. Yes. Of why. Evergreens keep their leaves. What else is important in winter? What else is important from this passage? Nobody has anything else? What were the three trees that helped the bird? Okay, so we have the juniper tree, the spruce tree, and the pine. And why did, as Blake told us, why did um, the, the Frost King say to, not to blow, the, blow their leaves off? Why? Brayden? Because they helped the bird out. Because they helped the bird out. It was a reward for them. It was, it was a, uh, a positive reward for the fact that they helped the bird, that they took care of the bird. Okay, so let's now switch. What are the details about the informational passage? So passage number two is informational. If you're saying they're different, we say, first of all, passage one is a myth. It's a myth about a bird with a broken wing who is looking for a warm place to stay. The bird asks a juniper, a spruce, and a pine to help. And because they help the bird, they are rewarded by the Frost King, who instructs his son not to, the north wind, not to blow the leaves off of those trees. And it ends, as Blake told us, by saying that that was why, that is why, evergreens like spruce, juniper, and pine stay green all winter, okay? And as we said, this is a fictional explanation of why evergreens are green through the winter. All right, so what can we say about the informational piece? What is important to say about that? All right, can we use a more mature word than just actual? Yes? A scientific it's a scientific. Did you notice those words like chlorophyll and photosynthesis, evaporation? Okay, so it's informational, it's facts, and it's scientific. And remember that part of the question that says to be specific. How important it is for us to be specific and use those specific keywords from the text. You could have included others like the chlorophyll and the photosynthesis, okay, but basically it's an informational uh, with facts and scientific to explain what? To explain what? Moises? How well, they stay green like all year. Okay. And why is it that they do, what is one of the reasons why they have to do that? What is it, Moises? Well, to stay alive. To stay
stay alive, to survive, right? It's how they have adapted to the cold weather, okay? To explain how evergreens have adapted <coughs> to cold weather in order to survive. All right, can anybody, everybody see now? This is what we're talking about. Once we find the difference, we have to go back and look for specific details that we would include in our explanation. Okay, all right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to turn and talk. How are these two passages similar? How are these two passages similar? Staying green all year. Both of these passages are trying to explain why evergreen trees like pines and junipers and spruces keep their leaves throughout the winter. And the leaves are obviously the leaves and needles, they're green. Why are they? That's why they're called evergreen, because they are always green. Okay, now here's another question for you. Now, we've just completed this graph. Could I turn this graph in, create this graph, and turn that in for my answer? Give me a thumbs up if you think yes. down. Give me a thumbs up if you think you should use this to write a written response. You are correct. If you turn in a Venn diagram and you have not been asked to complete a Venn diagram, okay, if you turn a Venn diagram in like this, I would, I would not accept it as an answer because you're being asked to write and respond. Okay, so let me write in the air for you right now what an acceptable fourth grade mature reader would have written based on these two passages. Okay, first of all, you would have needed to include the uh, title. So you would have said something like, Passage one, why the evergreen tree never loses their leaves. And passage two, why are evergreen trees green all year? Both try to explain why evergreen trees keep their needles or leaves throughout the winter. That would be, that would be acceptable on how they are the same. 
the similarity. Some of the responses I got were, were they're both about trees. Okay, which is not an acceptable fourth grade mature reader. Then you would go on to explain how they're different. Passage one, you've already identified the title, you don't have to do it again. Passage one is a myth about a bird with a broken wing who cannot fly south for warmer weather. The bird asks for help and a juniper, spruce, and pine help him. As a reward for this help, the Frost King tells his son, the North Wind, not to blow the leaves off these trees. Therefore, they keep their leaves throughout the winter. Passage two is an informational article, text that provides a factual scientific explanation for how it is that trees, evergreen trees like the spruce and the pine and the juniper survive or adapt to the cold weather and keep their leaves or needles throughout the winter. What I just wrote in the air that is an acceptable fourth grade mature reader response, especially for someone who has read the question before they read the passages, jotted in the white space what they wanted to use, even maybe perhaps in white space keeping some kind of a compare and contrast Venn diagram like I did, and who knows before they start that there are seven key words from the text, because Mrs. Chasen told them, there are seven key words from the text and that they need to use five of them. Okay, so what we're going to do today, and you'll get started, is you're going to use this, this Venn diagram, and you are going to write the response you should have written yesterday. You are going to write that right now, in your notebook. So please go ahead back to your seats and begin working. 